Hello and welcome. This is Vanessa Graulich. Today I want to talk about the FSA. This is the Florida Standards um, Assessment. And basically what I want to talk to you about is how does the test look for a third grader? And I'm going to show you the math the sample that they have on the website. And how to get your child ready for this test. Basically, I'm gonna give you today the tips that I had used for many years when I had a tutoring center with a Haymath group. And people basically will just drop off their kids and they say, here, there's the money, do it. Today I'm gonna to share it with you guys because I feel like the technique that we followed at a Haymath group was effective. And I felt that, um, I'm not gonna tell you it's like, you know, a quick fix, no, but, I'm gonna tell you why it's effective and how you can do it. And if you're an educator, maybe this is something that, you know, it might work for you. I always like to see other educators what they do because, you know, the more you know, the better. So now, what is the FSA? So this test, basically what it is, it's like a multiple choice test and I'm gonna show you. And I think you also have to like write it in. We're gonna see an example. And most of the concepts when you are on third grade are related to multiplication. That's the key word, multiplication. So let me just tell you, when I had a tutoring center, the youngest students that we will get will start with third grade. I, you know, after, like before third grade, like if I had like, I had people calling me like, oh, do you do tutoring for like kids on pre-K? And I was in shock. I was thinking, my God, like, you know, a pre-K kid needing a tutoring section? But then I understood why. There's so much pressure in these schools. Are they not counting? Are they counting? And then, you know, I have seen that these standard, you know, like these report cards for like a pre-K literally have like percentiles of statistics telling you like your child is here and you should be here. So I can understand why someone will be calling a tutor and be like, I'll pay whatever it takes <laughs> so you can teach the kid how to count because they're not doing well. So sometimes that will happen. And my the limit that we had because i didn't think that we were properly trained for you know little kids it was third grade when i had the parents calling me they were like oh my kid's gonna take the fsa we're really stressed my first question was okay how is his or her multiplication table and the parents wouldn't know because no one has ever asked them that question and i said look if we're able to get them to multiply then if you know how to add then you know how to multiply, then you can divide, and then you can pass this test. But if you know how to count, but you cannot multiply, then you can go to division. And that's the reason why then this test can become extremely painful for the student because they're just basically going to be facing to find perimeters, to find areas, to basically most of the questions, and I'm gonna show them to you right now, and I'm gonna show you how to identify them and be like, okay, now I understand what this test is about and I, I can help, you know, my child or the student that I have. And you're going to see how multiplication is basically everything. So first, when you have a third grader, you need to make sure that if they're struggling in class, sit down with the student or your son or your daughter. I'm going to say the student because it's easier for me to study. Instead of saying daughter, children and all that, I'm going to say the student. So, so just sit down with the student and you start with that basic. And you say two times four and they give you eight. And you're like, okay, easy. Then you start three times two. You start with, a, you know, two tables, three, just to, you know, warm up. And then when you start with six, seven, and if you see already that the student is struggling, in those five minutes, you already know that because they don't know how to multiply, most likely, again, they don't understand the question that they've been reading. They don't know how to find areas. So then all of these, uh, you know, steps to get to the vision are going to become extremely difficult. and. I'm gonna tell you nine out of 10, the problem was the multiplication. So how do we teach a student how to do multiplication, especially if they are in third grade? First thing I'm gonna tell you to do, get rid of the iPad, buy iPad. Get rid of anything that is electronic. If you're going to teach someone to do multiplication, I call it the, <laughs> the multiplication bootcamp. And all what I will do, I will sit down in front of with the student and then, you get one of these, these boards, $5, and you just first teach him the tables and have fun with it. Let's say that, you know, I sometimes will get like a dollar rule. I just, I love this dollar rule. And usually they will have like, you know, 
they are broken, whatever. But uh, as you can see here, you will have like, you know, multiplications here. Not only that, it was so much fun that only the fact that they were happy faces, it got the student into just look at it. And I will tell the student, look, we're going to write in here where you're going to have a cheat sheet. You give them a cheat sheet first. It could be a piece of paper. I just had this rule. And then you ask them with them looking at it. Because it makes no sense to start just asking them nine times three and then they're not gonna know. Your first one's to prep them, right? So you give them this and then you start, okay, nine times three and then you write it down. And then you do three times nine. And then now the students understand that nine times three and three times nine is the same thing. And you're like, bingo, community rule, <laughs> check. And that's how you go. Now, you can make this in such a fun way that by the time you finish the hour, the student is gonna be so pumped up that they're going to then want to do more. And that's the idea. Multiplication, you don't learn multiplication in one day. You're gonna learn multiplication in something consecutive. This is exactly like losing weight. This is not like, okay, I'm just gonna eat this little vegetable today and tomorrow I get McDonald's. No, you have to be consistent. And I promise you, the more consistent you are, it will take only, if you are like a really busy parent, train the older brother or the older sister and tell them, even if money is involved, you said, I want you to make sure that you do 20 of this. And if the other child is, wants to help, especially if you have like older kids that want to do math because they're like in seventh grade and they have like a third grader, that's going to make your life much easier. The other thing that I recommend you to teach in multiplication is this little baby. Why? First, you let them read it. Tell them, you know, you ask them, and then they're looking. You're like, okay, eight times two, da 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 and you pump them up, right? Then from there, you want to do the questioning. So you say, okay, now we're going to have a little bit of fun. You grab the thing, the board, I'm sorry, the thing, you grab the board, and you start writing down three of them, right? And then you tell the student, you have to do two by your, with, you know, with your brain, and then one, you can pick the chichi. So just pick two. And that's how you start playing. The more you play with a student with multiplication, and believe me, you can do a lot with multiplication. Then you tell them, now, do you want to check your results? You give them, a, this is a $2 calculator. And then this little calculator is going to make everything now much more fun because now you're giving the power to the student to go ahead and just study it on their own. Why I am so against those iPad games and because look, when they go to school, they have these softwares that I don't want to say the names so of all, all what they do is repeating, 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 repeating. And I'm going to tell you, I like math and the exhaustion of your eyes, just looking, it's just no different than the iPad. And there's nothing better than just sitting down with that person. And it is time but I'm going to tell you, it's one of the best investments you can do for a third grader. If you sit down and at the beginning, let's say that there's a very hostile relationship between you and the student, which can happen. When I say student, maybe your son or daughter, that's what I'm saying. Because it's not the same if a tutor does it, then you do it. Try to take a deep breath. Maybe you cannot pay a tutor. Maybe you don't have anyone that has the ability of, you know, doing this. Just relax. It's just multiplication. I'm pretty sure that if you know how to find a way of knowing your children what they want to do, maybe you want to reward them and be like, look, if you have 20 correct, we can do this and so on. I believe in the power of negotiation. There are people that know that he's going to do it because I want to. No, I think like if you start negotiating, we're humans. <laughs> you go by your willpower and say, I want to do it. The other thing that um, I want to recommend you. There's so much things in Amazon, especially now with this COVID, it's a little bit hard for students to feel math, to put it that way. That's how I want to call it. Get these little shapes. You know, I put these shapes around and Vera sometimes does, uh, she watches uh, Umisumi, which they talk a lot about shapes. And then she's like, oh, it's a cylinder, whatever, it's a cube. Believe it or not, just the fact that you can touch them and feel them, this actually I learned it from a, um, I, I actually, I, I, my favorite tutors were retired teachers that, you know, they were so good at it and they love to teach. So Judy White, she was my retired geometry teacher. She was incredible in geometry. And I remember the first thing that she brought to the center were these little shapes. And I was like, okay, they're fun. But I, as soon as a student will walk in, she will give it to the student and the nature of the nature of just grabbing it 
and you're seeing it and then you're like, oh, okay, I see it. It makes a big difference. This is the reason why get rid of the iPad if you want to teach multiplication because it is so much more comfortable, of course, giving the iPad and work. But I'm going to tell you, if you put one week or if you do it, maybe in the car, even the car is the best place to do it. If you're going to drop off your kids or if you're going someplace, most likely you're going to have 20 to 15 minutes. You do this routine at home and then you tell your kid, look, you're in the car and you're playing and you're like driving and you're like six times four, <laughs> four times six. Doesn't matter when, it's something that you just talk and you have fun. The other thing that you can do, play with cars. I don't have flashcards, which is a shame that I don't have the flashcards. And, uh, but flashcards, are, they're awesome too. But let's say you don't have flashcards. And let me just tell you, just the nature of cars, just again, the touch feeling, the, the iPad or whatever, you know, um, I, I'm going to call it artificial intelligence device that you use. It's not going to do that. It's not going to, you know, when you see cars. So what I will do is that you can just grab like, I don't know, I'm just making like two cars here. So you can just go ahead and just, you take all the face cars and the jokers and you're like, okay, how much is four times six, six times four. And you, you know, and you play. And again, all what they have to keep all the time is a little treasure. So I make it like a little treasure for the student. I remember having like these rules and just giving it to the student. And I will tell them, this is your power. <laughs> Don't lose it. And of course, because they were able to, you know, answer it and get a reward with me going, back, yeah, you did it. And that's something that I learned when I was teaching in China. Man, when you tell someone you did a great job, especially if it's an adult or a student, that just pumps you up. So yes, it's important to always say you're doing a great job. If they're not doing a great job, then you have to take a deep breath and first thing, I'm not the one that is not doing the good job. I'm not going to the student, like, is there a problem? And then if it's not you, then you just take the factor out, then you go to the if then <laughs> other factor, which if you feel that the student is not catching up, then just slow down and then, you know, take a little bit of a break. But I'm going to tell you nine out of 10 times, the students were so responsive when they will come and I will have a calculator on top of the table, cars, these happy faces, and the board. I'm going to tell you, this is the best you can have. If you have a board and you give this to your child, you're going to open like a new dimension of fun things to do. Because they can do scribbles, they can do, and you know what, where the whole freaking time in those iPads and those phones, and just the fact that you can just write, and again, like my eyes are destroyed <laughs> over all the artificial light, right, that we get all the time from the computers, the iPhone, and the whole thing, so I feel this is going to make your life much easier. Let me show you an example of uh, how an FSA third grade will look, and that way you can see how important uh, give me one second. No, this is not the one I don't want to share. One second. Okay, I'm back. I found it. <laughs> I had the wrong one. Okay, so as you can see here, this is from the floridaassessments.org. And this is how an FSA mathematics grade there is going to look like. So look, Florida Standard Assessments. Now, um, I'm going to show you how many questions involve multiplication, as you can see here. Okay, so look at this. Very important. I will recommend you, and I'm going to put this link on the bottom, to print this out if you can't, so that way the student can fill the test. Not only that, I will give your child, I know they do it in the schools, but you go ahead and sit down with your student or your child, and you're like, look, let's talk about this. How do you put the grid in? Because... Sometimes they might have trouble not even doing the question, but answering or how to answer, which, you know, it can be complex because, like, I wouldn't know if to put it to the right, to the left, those type of things, right? Okay. As you can see here, boom, multiplication. Um, here is about rounding numbers. So multiplication, we have one. Rounding numbers, we have to worry. Here, what you can see here is what is the difference in liters between the amounts of what in these containers. What are we doing here? you're basically doing subtraction, right? And you're basically visualizing it. So it's not that bad, but look at here. You have A, B, C, D, E. I know. <laughs> like, why not four choices? Let's make it harder. <laughs> Let's do five choices. But either, either way, you can see how complex these questions are. 
honestly, like I've read it and I have to read it two times and I am an adult, right? So, but I feel like kids now are much, much better wired than we are. So they can do this, but how much better would it be if they can practice understanding what's going to be on the test? Because sometimes it's not how hard the test is. It's the fact that you can go prepare, but then if you see a test and you know, you, you're in the unknown, right? The unknown is always fearful and it's always risky. That's the problem. Then going down, look at this again, division. But if you don't know how to multiply, you're not going to be able to divide. Uh, they do talk about geometric attributes, like we talk about the shapes. You're also going to have what is called uh, creating expressions, and this has to do with perimeter and area. You can see here, this is a complex, not complex. I'm going to say, like, it's not a test, like, you know, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. They talk about fractions. Again, if I don't understand that, for example, 8 over 2 is different than 2 over 8, you are going to have trouble. And look at this. Um, 8 over 2 and then 15 over 7, there are two fractions that could be the answer because it's equivalent to a whole number, but obviously the answer is C. But you could see that if I don't know that 4 times 2 is 8, then I couldn't figure out the answer. Um, now, you can see here that there's two sections. You're going to have section 1. Each section is done per day for what I read, and each section is done in 80 minutes, um, which, my God, a third grader. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is um, now here um, you're they give you as you can see like a multiplication right so look, look how you read it 5 times 5 is 25 maybe it will be helpful to print this out make it big and just put it on the refrigerator and just play with it and teach your child how to cross you know and you're like oh seven times eight this is going to help tremendously as you can see here, you also have to figure out how to read time, uh, again, subtraction, and most of the time, multiplication. Division comes out a lot, but without multiplication, again, you cannot do division. And again, it's addition and subtraction, but like I said before, look at that. There's a lot of um, equivalent expressions. What expressions, when they say equivalent expression, is like, how do you make two things look equal to each other? And it can get complicated because sometimes there are parents that don't understand how to do seven times two plus three because they have forgotten how to do pandas and all that. So try to get yourself familiar with this test. And let's say that you're not going to teach it, but you're going to hire a tutor to teach it. If you're familiar with the test, then you can tell the, the tutor directly. And that's going to make the relationship between the student, tutor, or parent, you know, student, parent, tutor, much easier, the triangle. And when this, this, and that, I had parents that were so <laughs> like organized that of course, you know, things will be much easier. But I also had parents that had three more kids that I would be like, oh, can you make a list? And their face was like, really? Like you're asking me to do this? So in that case, I will be like, not, you know, I will assess the situation and I will be like, I'm going to create so much more stress if I tell this mom <laughs> to do this. So I'll take care of it. And basically, you know, that's how we've had a lot of kids going through this FSA Common Core and, you know, the EOC and the whole thing. And this is the reason why I got so inspired to write the EOC book because I just didn't like the parents being so stressed and the students and the children. And I think COVID is probably going to um, increase this feeling. And let's see how much all educators we can do to make this process a little bit easier and make sure that we keep a quality and adequate level of education. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Have a good day.